Hey guys, uh, just figured I'd make a little video to help you out with um, some of the ones you might be having trouble with. And let's just, um, let's look at number three actually from the worksheet. I know most of you did it in class, but just uh, let's take a look there. So three was uh, the integral x squared sine four x uh, dx. And most of you eventually realize that, you know, you're gonna let the u be the x squared, the dv, the sine four x, and you had to deal with a little bit of a reverse chain rule kicker turned into a double dipper problem and you know a lot of the little pieces were easy to lose. Uh, so I'm going to show you another technique to handle ones that are like this but they have to be kind of like this specifically otherwise it won't work. So this is what you're looking for. You're actually going to make a little chart and the the u that you would use that's going to be the one you're going to be taking derivatives for and you need to have that term be one that eventually goes to zero. So I'm going to put that right here. If I were to take derivatives of this, I would get 2x, 2, and then 0. So that's how I know that it's a candidate for this column. The next column are going to be the ones you do the antiderivatives for, and that could be anything. Usually it's something that's cyclical, like sine, cosine, or uh, e to the x, that kind of thing. That's why it's very specific. So this column is going to be your derivatives. This column is going to be your antiderivatives. Think of this column as sort of like the u, and think of this column as kind of like the dv. The last column is just reserved for the sign. Like, sorry, let me clarify, not this sign, literally the sign, like plus or minus, okay? So here's how it works. Uh, in this column, you're gonna do derivatives, just literally do one after the other. Derivative of x squared is two x, derivative of two x is two, derivative of two is zero, and that's where you stop. Antiderivative, all right? So you still have to do the antiderivative, but it's gonna line everything up just nicely uh, to help us out. So antiderivative of sine, of course, is negative cosine, but there's a thing here, it's 4x. So it's negative cosine of 4x, reverse chain rule kicker, divided by four. Okay, if you wanna write it as negative 1 fourth cosine 4x, it's the same thing, obviously, and we always start with plus. Um, next antiderivative, so antiderivative of cosine is uh, sine, um, but it's negative because there's a negative in front, so it's negative sine of the thing, divided by the reverse chain rule kicker, which is divide by four, but we already have a four, so that turns into 16, right? One fourth times one fourth is one sixteenth, and we alternate the signs. Last one, to get sine, I needed um, cosine, but it's negative, so it's actually gonna be positive cosine of four x over, the 16 comes along for the ride, another reverse chain rule kicker is a factor of one fourth, that brings me to 64, and I alternate one last time. And that's where you stop. You always stop at the, um, you know, when you, at the at the row that has the zero. So again, derivatives, antiderivatives, alternating signs starting with plus. And you ready for the fun part? Tick, tack, toe. Done. Negative x squared over four cosine of four x. That's the first term. Positive, but there's a negative here, so that makes a negative. Negative times negative is positive. Two over 16 is eight. So this becomes positive x over eight sine of four x. Last term positive, all positive, but two over 64 is the same as one over 32. And that would be cosine of four x. Don't forget your plus c. Have a nice day. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize I was cut off there. I'll, I'll, I'll run it through again. Negative times positive is negative, so that's why this was negative. Cosine 4x, cosine 4x, I have a 4 in the denominator and an x squared in the numerator. x squared over 4, that's the first term. Tick, tack, negative times negative is positive. 16 in the bottom, 2 on the top leaves an 8 on the bottom. This x comes along for the ride, that's the x. Sine of 4x is the, the trig part. And then the last part, I think I forgot to write the plus here. Plus, as this is all positive here, 2 over 64 is 32 and the cosine 4x and then the plus c. And this is your integration by parts in a slightly more organized manner um, without having to do it sort of the, the double dipper long way. So this works nicely when you have a term that goes to zero from derivatives and you have a cyclical you know, of, uh, expression that you can do antiderivatives for um, in like a pattern. And the plus minus just kinda is there. All right. Some uh, I think the book actually calls this tabular integration. I fondly refer to this as tic-tac-toe because okay, it kind of looks like a tic-tac-toe board. 
Okay, hopefully that helps. Uh, I have a feeling that's gonna help with a couple of the homework problems if you haven't gotten there yet. Um, my eyes are leaning towards number seven, which looks like a triple dipper if you look at it. And I think this method would come in handy for a problem like that. There are definitely several others you could do it for. Um, just make sure it fits this model. And just remember you always start like this. It always starts with this term and down and over. So tick, tack, toe. If there was a fourth term, it'd be tick, tack, toe, tick. Right? If it was only two terms, you could just do tick tack. All right, I'm looking at like number um, number one. You could actually do this for if you want, and it'd just be a it'd be a tick tack. All right, give it a shot. Let me know if you need any help. Good luck, and you're welcome.